Yes and amen. You are faithful. Faithful. You are faithful. In Jesus' name. Sits. Did I say Hebrews chapter 10? Let's look at verse 23. Let us hold fast. To our profession. For faithful is he. That promised. And I says. Let us hold unswervingly. To the hope we profess. For he who promised. Is faithful. Amen. Faithful is he. That promised. Amen. And. Uh, I want you to know that the journey of faith is a journey where we are sustained by the faithfulness of God. Amen. Uh, to say that God is faithful is probably the only thing that makes him different from anybody else that you know. How many of you know that the devil is a liar? That's very true. And every one of you who are married in this house you do remember your years of courtship when your husband or wife-to-be would say some wonderful promises about what the future is going to be like. <laughs> the baby, I'm going to do this for you. It's going to be heaven on earth. Now, you know today that didn't happen, don't you? Now, probably a quarter of those things happened. Many of them didn't happen. Of course, Man cannot successfully honor every word that comes out of his mouth. Why? Because he's limited in his ability to deliver. It's one thing to say the right thing, but it's another thing to be able to honor it. Because it takes capacity to deliver every promise. And that is the reason why they would not... Now, you know all these politicians running around the election year? Everybody's saying the right things. Nobody's telling you that we're going to go through hunger famine, recession, unemployment, everybody says, I'm going to change things around. So God, as we celebrate the end of the year, thinking about how faithful he is, and looking at all the years that you have walked in the faith, thinking about how faithful he is, and all that has even happened in the face of your unfaithfulness. <laughs> God is a faithful God. Amen. Now, in the book of Hebrews, one of the things that you may need to understand is that the historical circumstances of the book of Hebrews, the passage that we read, is a statement that is written to people that are under persecution. The story is that this was a time when some of the Jews, now it's called Hebrews because it was actually written to Hebrews, Jews. But these were Jews that had been converted to the faith. They had accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. And the trouble is, they were facing persecution from other fellow Jews. How many of you know that this is something that we are familiar with, especially even Africans? When you depart from the gods of the fathers or the family, usually you go through a real period of persecution and isolation. That you are ostracized for having left what is supposed to have raised you and what is 
supposed to become the faith and the gods of the family. Now, it's worse off among Jewish people because you are literally disowned. You are made to believe that you are actually a rebel and you have departed. You, a funeral is even conducted for you to show that you have died. You have actually deserted the God that you knew since you, your upbringing. Now, so the writer writes them and encourages them, encouraging them to hold on. So he says in this word, hold fast. Everybody say hold fast. That's not regular language that we use in many ways of speech. But it's actually talking about the fact that continue holding on to God. And the reason, the encouragement he gives them is that remembering that faithful is he that called. Amen. Faithful is he that promised. You must know that you can trust in God. Keep on holding to the promise because faithful is he that promised you. What does that mean? It means to say that do not give up on what 